Award, along with the world's ultimate Duke fans, contestants, okay? Please, with the cast of Dukes of Hazard, please come to the stage. Anyway, a lot of people. How about that coming to Duke Fest for the honeymoon? Isn't that wonderful? Let's hear it. All righty. Who we got here? My name's Jaime. I'm representing Columbus, Ohio, and I'm the Black Bow Duke. Any black guys in here? Contestant number three and contestant number four. I'm Beth Maxi from Montrose, Michigan. All righty. Any Michigan guys here? All right. What we're going to do right now is each cast member is going to ask a question. We're going to have four. And then we're going to have three questions, and they're going to have to raise their hand before they answer it. Now, please don't blurt out the answer, okay? So we want to win this fair and square. So, Don Pedro Colley, would you do the honors of asking the first question to contestant number one? Okay, contestant number one, um, who are you supposed to be? A Duke fan. Oh, the greatest Duke fan. Ultimate Duke fan. The ultimate, okay. To be the ultimate Duke fan, what is it you must do? Sing. number two will be coming from Rick Hurst. Rick. Hello there, young lady. How are y'all today? We're great, thank you. Very good. Texas, huh? What yeah. part of Texas did you say? DFW. All right, all right. All right, here's a question for you relating to Cletus's character, all right? In which episode did Cletus first appear? Before he was a regular on the show, what was the name or the number of the episode that Cletus first appeared. Number six! Number two! I remember number three. That's a tough question right there. That is tough. No, uh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Episode number 11, Money to Burn. Oh. 
That was the question. All right, contestant number three asking a question. Our homeboy here from Valdosta, Georgia, Sonny Schroyer! What's your name? My name's Jaime, sir. Jaime? Jaime. How you spell it? J-A-I-M-E, Spanish for J. Oh, Jaime, Jaime! Hey, Jaime. Hi, Jaime. Uh, Jaime. Jaime. Uh, relating to my, to Enos's character, uh, what was Enos's favorite fast pastime? Well, besides, uh, you know, watching Daisy Duke. Oh, oh, you got it, Jaime! Sonny, thank you so much. We got another Georgia homeboy, ladies and gentlemen. Not only was he on the greatest show ever in the history of television, but he also represented the fourth conditional district of the great state of Georgia, Ben Jones. With question four for contestant number four. Where the hell do you think you're going? But you ain't gonna get there from here. You're so pretty, you get a real easy question. What was Cooter's last name? Davenport. All righty. All righty. Now, what, and now we go into our lightning round now. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask a question. And whoever raises your hand, you're going to get the first crack at the question. And here to give us our first question in our lightning round, you know him, you love him. We can't do without him. Mr. James Best. Yeah. <laughs> what in Russian P Coltrane? What did a P stand for? All right, right here, contestant. Purvis. Purvis, okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, with our next question in our lightning round. Oh, yes, Mr. Bo Duke himself, John Schneider. I'm going to say this fast, so get your hands ready. It's not hard. This is going to be a matter of speed. What was, regarding my character, my whole first name? All right, Jaime. Beauregard Duke. There you go. Got All right, it. All right, okay. And our final question in our lightning round. Whoa! Make a rabbit break a log chain! This is going to be another question that's fast and furious, so get ready. Who's the only Duke that held a real job? All right, right here, contestant one. Of course, Daisy. <laughs> Daisy Duke? All right. Okay. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the cast of the greatest television show in the history of television. for that so thank y'all so much again show some love for your cast right here don't go anywhere there's more coming up in just a few minutes yeehaw that's right so what are we going to do now well i think we're going to have these people help us judge the uh the finalists in our look alike cast look alike oh my goodness now everybody looks so good in this contest I'm telling you, I'm going to need all your help. Everybody, you promise to help me? Yeah! All right, all right. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Let me hear everybody over here. Okay. Wait a minute, what about everybody over here? Okay. What about everybody over here? I think we're going to be able to do it if we all do it together. Uh, where well, are I the guess girls? we need our. Uh, can we have our? Is it time? Can we have our cast lookalikes? Renee, here I is got it one time? right now. Come on up here, sweetie. Yes. Everybody remember Bo Duke, right? Hi. Can you 
try the general, honey? Yes. Oh yeah? And look at you! Hey, y'all. Betty. Yeah. I didn't realize he had so many kids. <laughs> How about you, sweetie? Who are you? Let's go pick of drink. <laughs> section. Let's get our bows over here. Roscoe's. Come here, Roscoe. Daisy, y'all too. You're fine. Looking pretty. Looking pretty. All right. I guess we should, uh, I guess okay. we start, right? Okay, yeah, let's, well. How do you want, it? how would you like to do it? Here's our Daisy too. Hello, I'm Sophia. Sophia and Yeah! All right. Okay, and we got, we got Cooter. How are you doing? Got it, Mayo. And when did you start doing this? Is this from... When did you decide that you could be Cooter? A while back. Uh, this is my uh, first time that I started a contest, and I want to make sure Cooter is uh, represented, and uh, I love the show. Thank you! Any guys, any, anybody want to jump in? Ron? Ron? You yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. want to ask? I was hanging with Jesse. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesse! Oh my gosh, we got so many great people here. Who are you? Well, pass him on a gun bush. Don't y'all know who I am? Sounds like Enos to me. Pass him on a gun bush. Don't you know who I am? This is gonna be tough, isn't it, everybody? Yeah. This is tough! This is tough, so I don't know! Look at Boss Hawk. I mean, this is gonna be crazy. So I guess let's do the whole, uh, Man, I'm, seriously though, Uncle Jesse's just, these guys, you guys look good. Well, they could both be my Uncle Jesse, I'll tell you that right now. That's right, you guys. Well, uh, how'd you prepare to be Uncle Jesse? Well, uh, just got the overalls and the clothes and grew the beard. <laughs> so you've been working on this role for a while? Since last week? About, about three years, yeah. direction what was that I have to tell you something brother you are what the, you're not the only We're kind of busy you're here. not the only sexy blonde man up in here tonight ladies and gentlemen you're a brunette <laughs> where's my man Barry Barry would you come join me on the stage please I mean Byron Cherry everybody Byron Cherry How's it going, Byron? <laughs> Excellent. What What are you doing here? I was, I was, <laughs> yeah, I'll ask you the same thing. <laughs> what are you doing here? I was, I kind of, I think, didn't I, re I replaced you one time, I'm here to replace you again. <laughs> So if we do it, if we do it a year at a time, then that means he's going to be, I'm going to be here for four minutes and he's going to be here for 18 minutes. 
And if we do it for seven years, now I think what everybody needs to know that, that uh, not a lot of people know is that long before, the, and I mean truly, long before there was a Dukes of Hazard uh, in 78, there was a friendship between this guy and me. We used to hang out together all the time in Atlanta. I've known Byron Cherry since 1976. Yeah, and uh, we used to be we used to be mistaken as brothers. We used to go audition for for commercials as brothers, and he would always get the job. He would always get the job, except that one time. One time. I remember he, he looked at me. He was sick, sitting on the uh, in a parking lot, and uh, I think it was a restaurant in Atlanta, Georgia, somewhere. And, and he looked at me, and uh, he goes, Byron. I'm gonna get this part. You're not. <laughs> and he did! I've always been brutally honest. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But, but we kind of both did. We both did. Because later on when, when uh, Coy and Vance showed up because of Aunt somebody's rheumatism. Somebody's. Uh, and we had to go to the NASCAR circuit, which is why we're here, of course. Yeah! The NASCAR circuit. What happened to me? Well, we came back. Oh, that's right. You had to go help Aunt Tilly, other, other Aunt Bertha's other rheumatism. <laughs> But it was really, it was really, really cool to have Byron there because when uh, when that whole thing happened, uh, they did a they did a big talent search and everything. But but uh, my first recommendation to them because we weren't not on speaking terms with Warner Brothers, but it was there's a guy in Atlanta, Georgia named Byron Cherry. I'll you do can it. look at everybody you want to look at. You can do all the searching around the country that you want, but you're gonna wind up with Byron Cherry, and they did wind up with Byron Cherry. So I was delighted, delighted that he was there. Yes. Thank you very much. There was something, we, can, we can't do it up here, I could never do it, but this guy is so athletic. I don't know if you remember because you might have had too much to drink. No backflips today. He is, he is a Carl Edwards backflip sort of a guy, and he used to do this, this leapfrog thing over, over uh, parking meters. General Lee's. Yeah, well, over General Lee's too. But he used to leapfrog over parking meters, and I always thought that, you know, if, if, he, if, if that didn't work out, it would be a bad thing. But he's a great guy, and I'm glad that he's at Duke's Fest because he is Coy, Coy Duke and Byron Cherry are part of the Duke oh, family. Duke. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, everybody. You guys are awesome. And we will see you tomorrow. I'll be here all day. And I expect you to be here. All right. Thank Can you, John. Can you sing this song? Can Thank you, you very much. Go ahead. We're all going to sing it. Sing this song.
Is there an April Wright? W R I G H T here? April Wright? That's you, April, right there? April Wright, April right there? No? Do you know a Justin Dragney? Do you know Justin Dragney? Your lights are on in the park. No, where's Justin Dragney? Okay, the folks around these two, would you just, uh, if you can sit down or just kind of hunker down? Because this, uh, this is a note that I got here. Uh, April Wright. Justin Dregney, standing to your right, my left, would very much like to know if you would marry him. We're taking that as a yes. Congratulations, folks. Congratulations. Oh, that's the greatest thing in the world. Justin, what is up with your hair, man? Is that an 01 gone, gone a, a, awry? That's cool. Congratulations, folks. Congratulations. It's so cool to be part of that moment. Yes. Big hand for Justin Lake. You gotta love that. Uncle Jesse would be proud. All right, here's a little song about Texas. <laughs> By the way, we're gonna have great fireworks tonight. And whoever prayed for the rain to only hit here for about 10 minutes, thank you. <laughs> that was great. This is a little song that does go out to all the girls out there, and uh, I think April, we're gonna do this for April as well. Got the girls! Hey, Angie. Thank you. Uh, a lot of people ask questions about Dukes of Hazard, and why does it, why does it mean so much to so many people still after all these years? Family, well, there's, there's family and there's clean shows and stuff. It's, it's really hard to, they ought to ask you is what I'm trying to say. Uh, we're all delighted to be part of it, but but every now and again something will happen. When we did the Dukes, uh, when we were actually filming it, a lot of times we would get calls from uh, different organizations. One in particular that was a stellar organization, still is, it's called the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah, Make-A-Wish is great. And Make-A-Wish Foundation is about giving, giving uh, young people who've had some uh, some trouble health-wise, uh, making their dreams come true, making a wish come true. So these are fantastic people. To have the honor of being a 13-year-old boy, 14-year-old boy's make-a-wish wish in 2008, 30 years after the Dukes of Hazard started, is really... Uh, more than I can handle as a father. It makes me so proud to be part of part of that show. And I would like for you all to meet a young man named Jamie, who is a a, uh, a warrior. He's been through more than a hundred year old should be through. He's doing great. His make a wish wish was to be here, and he is. And where are you, Jamie? Where are you, Jamie? Jamie, come on up here, buddy. Tell everybody where you're from, buddy. Tawanda, Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania. What's the first part? Tawanda. Tawanda? Tawanda, Pennsylvania. And we were talking backstage a little bit, uh, and I said, uh, but why do you like the Dukes of Hazzard? What, what is it? Here, get, get right on that mic and tell these people, because that's the question everybody wants to know. Just, just always been a fan. That's about it. But you said something about it back there. It was, what kind of, what is it? Because, let me try again, Jamie, why, why is it that you like the Deuce of Hazard so much? I don't know, it's all about the only thing worth watching on TV. <laughs> now, for a, while, for a while, you didn't have any hair, right? Right. Was that weird? Not really. Not really? Not for me. Did you, did you uh, when you started to lose it, did you shave it off, or did you let it just fall out? Well, both. 
You just went bald? It fell off for a while. Yeah. Shaved. Then you shaved it off. Yeah. You know, I do another show called uh, Smallville, and there's a bald guy in there. His name is Lex Luthor, but you weren't like that. Can you take off your hat, show folks how you're doing? There you go. Yeah. It's an honor to have you here. I'm delighted that you're here at Duke's Fest this year. All right, you take care. I'll see you backstage. All right, buddy. Bye. This is the first song that I ever did. Uh, it was on the It's Now, it's now or Never record. That's the one where I look kind of like a, a claymation figure on the album cover. Why did they have to airbrush me at 19 years old? That's what I want to know. Why did they have to do that? But this uh, this was a song that was on there, and it's also it's also on the uh, the Dukes of Hazard record. And I kind of slipped it into Collier and Company too a little bit. I keep waiting for the phone to ring about that one, but. Uh, it hasn't yet. A little song called In the Driver's Seat. Goes like this. Thank you, folks. We did it. I think uh, I think the fireworks are going to start any minute. So. Uh, why don't we, uh, I'll tell you what, this is a little strange thing to ask everybody out here to do, but let's give 60 seconds to the memory of Denver Pyle and Sorrel Book. Let's do that. Let's not bow our heads. Let's look around at, at the folks who've been keeping them alive in many respects for the years, the 30 years that Dukes has been going, but the several years since those two gentlemen have passed. Somebody with a stopwatch, count us, count us 60 seconds and let's start remembering the wonderful man that was Denver Pyle, Uncle Jesse, and the wonderful man that was Sorrel, that was Boss Hogg, Sorrel Book. Okay. Just two good old boys Never leave your Beats all you ever saw Never, you're right Been in trouble with the law Since the day they was born Straighten the curves Fight men the hills Someday the mountain might get but the law never lives. Making their way the only way they know how. That's just a little bit more than the law allows. Just two good old boys Wouldn't change if they could Still fighting the system like two modern day Robin Hood See you at the fireworks, y'all. Thank you, Denver. Thank you, Sorrel. We love you. Good night.
because the fireworks aren't ready. Oh, everybody's going over there. Just keep going over there and we'll sing one more song. You know, just go get set up. The fireworks will be over here. So this way nobody will trample anybody. We're worried about people stepping on each other. I'll do the yeehaw at the end of the at the end of the song. Let's do uh No, let's do another fast song, right? Well, I don't feel much like a cowboy tonight. I've been around enough to know. Yeah, but do make your way over there the only way you know how. <laughs> Watch out for little feet because if it gets darker, we don't want anybody stepping on any kids. So be careful as you go over there. And I'll sing while you're doing that. No, that's not right. V8 scream and we're... What the heck chord was that? We're back for more. Carrying on like we did before. Oh, good for you. I got my gym on the side. I got my on the side. I got my gym on the side. Two, three, four. Carry on like we did before. Oh, ten in the tank, four on the floor. V8 scream and we're back for more. Carry on like we did before. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I thought you were talking about Kansas. <laughs> We won't do that one either. How about what? Yeah. I've been around enough to know? All right. Here, I'll play that. There's no need to brag about it, miss. Here, I'll start. You guys come in in a minute. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you had a great time here tonight. Tell all your friends, uh, cell phone, text them, tell them to come tomorrow. It's not going to rain. It's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you enjoy the fireworks. They're over there, right? Fire, I love you too. Fireworks are going to be yonder ways, as they say here, I'm told. Don't step on the little feet as you're going over there. Enjoy yourselves. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. There you go.
$726,000. But every time Roscoe got in the car, it was money for Cooter. I love the way you drive. <laughs> Anyhow, y'all, this is incredible uh, what these fellows do. They were literally risking their lives every day to make us look good. We appreciate it. They're the best in the world at what they do. Now, today, the jump's going to be done by Craig Baxley Jr. Craig Baxley Sr. jumped the first General Lee almost 30 years ago. He jumped it right into history. And his dad, Craig Jr.'s grandfather, was the stunt director for all those years, and he, probably as much as anybody involved in the show, deserves the credit, Mr. Paul Baxley, you know, a legend among the stunt community. You see his name there every week on the credits, and uh, he gave the, the show its real energy, its real life, and we had to be quick on our feet when Paul was around. He'd get run over. Rick, tell him about that first episode. <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong question. I should have asked, what was Cletus's relationship to Paul's home? That would have been a better question. Somebody knows. Uh, that's right. We <laughs> well, we thank you guys for coming out here. You're going to see the finest stuff in the world performing for you here in a minute. And uh, as Alan White Jr. is famous for saying, we did their acting for them. They were the stars of the show. We just did the acting for them. We went through something like 1,200 police cars. Yeah. Alan was his, uh, That's right. I, uh, Alan used to say that I did all of his dialogue. Yeah. The guys are almost ready to get to, to start the cars up. They're about ready to get the cars. So if all of us will go down there. Uh, I will go down and try to explain to these folks what's going on. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. The cast of the Dukes of Hazard. No, 
Josh Blitz going to film something. That's a problem. Oh, okay. Because nobody ever gets hurt. There you go. Come on up here where they can see you. I've done a lot of roles, and uh, there's new, new Rex called Sidewinders. I do a lot of them, but this is the first jump I've done probably since Dukes. Really? Right. And, uh, and actually. And I do it. Uh, I've done the turnover pretty much every year, but I'm uh, getting to a point where doing jumps is a little harder on you. So I, I wanted to get one more in, maybe two. But uh, and Eddie, we worked for for years. He's worked on the show years ago. He was kind enough to come in and do the turnover. I put the bar on him, but uh, they've seen how high I went. But Eddie has a bigger letter foot than I do. Hello, everybody. Well, thank you for having us. Um, my family is here, and they're they're from Georgia. So my little daughters Haley and Cecilia and Scarlett. If you're out there, wave. Daddy loves you. My son Declan. They're all there. So thank you for having us. We love coming back here and doing this for you. I hope you enjoy the show. Uh, well, we got trouble right here. <laughs> we got trouble right here in River City. I'm going to show the camera on the uh, main show. Oh, never mind. As you can tell, this has been uh, uh, very well rehearsed. And it's really thought out. And Gosh, thanks for that stall, Tom. That was really, really good, huh? I really did. Yeah, it's very important. <laughs> what is this I'm standing in? I drive it. All right. It's a quiz. What is this? What? What is this? Ah! What is this? Isn't that a pipe ramp? On the nose, buddy. Okay. What, uh... What is it made of? Pipe? <laughs> wow. wow. And you got a camera underneath it. Ooh. What? The camera that's going to be sitting underneath it. Well, there's a camera here. And the camera is here because... There's a film crew, they've got about 10 cameras out here. They're filming all of this for the DVD. They're doing a DVD about the entire Duke's Fest experience. And of course, we're going to highlight the Sun Show. Of course. Of course. So, this thing at the end of this pipe ramp is a kicker. designed. It's the kicker. You are amazing. Uh, <laughs> What are you going to do? To at the very end of the ramp to kick the car up in the air and do what Eddie had, had uh, talked about earlier. It gives it that washing machine kind of a spin through the air. And again, this is something someone is doing on purpose. <laughs> in who, developed the, who developed the pipe ramp, anyway? Who developed the pipe ramp? That'd be Samuel B. Pipe. Uh, I have no idea, Tom, who developed the pipe ramp. Why you? Why don't Gary you guys should know it? A lot we of did. the... Uh, Wait a minute, let's ask Gary. <laughs> is this Vaseline that's on this piece of white tape? What is that? The pipe ramp was developed on Dukes of Hazard. Gary Baxley here, ladies and gentlemen. Do you remember the first car that was jumped on the juice or over the pipe ramp? Yeah, it was in sand. It was really, yeah. Who my ball up? Yeah, who you make the problem? Cool. So Gary Baxter himself was the first guy to jump on the pipe ramp back when he was six feet tall. Okay. All right, folks, here goes Eddie. You better get up, son. The thing I remember is the cars used to stall when they do a 180. Exactly. Sorry. 
That's why we always cut to an insert shell without tires. So we can start the car up again. Okay, here comes Eddie. You're not going to believe what you're about to see. I turned it over to the top of the blue line. Hit the ground. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright kids. Let's start.